Hello gamers, this is Brianna's Yarn, Gamer Girl Yarn, Gamer Girl Yarn. Hello friends and welcome to a bonus episode of the Big Knot Knitting Podcast. My name is Brianna, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Big Knot Knitting. This isn't your regular podcast. If you're looking for knitting content, that's not what's happening today. I mentioned I wanted to start dabbling in yarn dyeing, so I'm taking the leap and dyeing an entire sweater for myself. So in true Bob Ross fashion, let me show you what I've done so you can paint along with me. Today we are gonna use uh, Jacquard Acid Dyes. They were the ones I could find at my local yarn shop stash, so they're the ones we're using today. I have pumpkin orange, uh, bright yellow, naturally my favorite color. My cameraman suggested that this is the perfect color. Uh, I have golden yellow as well. Um, and then for speckling at the end, I've got teal and cherry red, because I'm always drawn to teals and red's a nice compliment. Uh, I've gone ahead and prepared dye stocks in pumpkin orange, golden yellow, and bright yellow. Because they're dye stocks, which is the powder mixed with liquid, they look very different than they actually do. I've tested some on the paper towel just to be sure. Uh, the dye stocks are just water, dye powder, and citric acid. Um, I followed a video, or I watched a video, a tutorial. I can't remember the name of it at all right now, but I'll be sure to link it below. And she included a dye stock recipe. My little bottles are a lot smaller, so I just shrunk it down by about to about two fifths of her recipe. And then over here, I have five skeins of gathering yarn, vanillo or virillo. Uh, gathering yarn Italian in vanillo or van valino rather. It is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is a fingering weight. So I've got uh, five skeins in here. They're kind of in like a long loop. Uh, I want to dye them all at once just to make sure they're consistent, but there's a lot of yarn in here, so we'll see whether consistency works in my favor. Um, I'm going to high immersion a tonal yellow first. So there's the, I can, submerge my hand pretty much on top of the yarn so there's lots of water in here. The water's warm but that's just from the tap. I haven't heated it yet. So I'm going to start by basically making kind of some semblance of a pie division of my three dye stock colors. Um, I think I won't talk through that part because it's going to take some concentration. All right, so I'm gonna start with bright yellow. I think I'm gonna do a section kind of this size, roughly. I'm gonna draw up a section first. I picked these um, Rubbermaid juice boxes because they do allow me to squirt the yarn and coat the area with a degree of control instead of just pouring it out of a jar. makes gross pea sounds. So I'm going to push it in and make sure I'm coating all the way. Um, in the tutorial I followed she used a circular pot so she had perfect um, pie pieces. I'm also getting a bit of bleeding but that's fine. Um, and I'm just picking up making sure the stuff at the bottom is getting die because it's not. Um, I want to make sure I get some fairly saturated yellows in all of my skeins so the ones that got drowned in the bottom will not if I'm not careful. And then we're almost out so I'll take the lid and dump the last of the powder out as well. And it's really bleeding. There's a lot of water in here but that's fine. The high immersion should theoretically um, cause the colors to kind of blend a little bit more. If I was doing low immersion, you would strike the dye or strike the yarn and then um, 
be uh, hooped for them blending. Here they're definitely going to play together a lot more. So now I'm going to go in with golden yellow. It looks really red, but when we add it, I'm hoping it looks a lot less red. Oh my dye coated hands. I haven't heated the yarn yet, which is why I'm still able to like play in it. Apparently it's quite red. <laughs> I think it'll heat activate a little yellower. That's very like blood red. And this water does have acid in it and the yarn was soaked in acid. So there's a lot of acid in an attempt to get like quick striking on my colors. And then this with this bottle I can technically go and shoot color to the bottom and also suck up color apparently. <laughs> I considered a turkey baster, but then I was like, I have to change, like clean between colors. That's quite time consuming, and I'm just experimenting at this point. So, do a pickup test, make sure. My camera boy is very patient and very cute, in case anyone was wondering. Um, I am doing this in the food kitchen, so I will have to clean up quite fairly carefully and anytime we're using powders we do put on masks just to be sure that we're doing everything safe making sure no one breathes in the dust powder. So there's golden yellow which is apparently quite red. <laughs> A little bit of a surprise. Um, I think it'll definitely overpower some of my bright yellow but that's okay. And then our last color is pumpkin orange. This was kind of a last minute addition. Uh, I was like, I think I need one more yellow tone, so I picked an orange. This looks like it's quite similar to golden yellow, though, so. Then we'll just work that in there a little. I'm sure someone who actually dyes yarn will watch my technique and just cringe. Um, I'm honestly just doing this to kind of play, so. Let's see. I am liking the vibrancy these colors are kind of giving. Um, yeah, I'm going to have very little room left in this pot. And then I'm going to just do a little there, move it a little up into these color zones as well. And then make sure we're getting the bottom. And you don't want to agitate it too much because you might felt it. This is super washed, so I should be fine. Um, I think I'll leave that little bit of pumpkin orange out because my water seems quite saturated. We'll see. I can see I am going to get some color um, migration in this pot, but they're all tone on tone, so it should be okay. And we've hit the bottom of the container. There we go. I ended up using it all because I don't want to have extra dye stock to take it. I'm just going to make sure we're kind of coating everybody pretty decently and splash dye all over. Um, I have some bright patches, but a little bit of yellowy white is fine in this colorway I'm trying to dye up. I think the reds are going to very greatly overpower my bright yellow, but that's okay. So now I'm going to turn up the heat and let this simmer until the water starts to run clear. So when that happens, I will come back. All right, so I've let the dye sit and soak. It appears the yellow soaks quite slowly and I lack a little bit of patience. So I've removed, as you can tell, there's a lot less water in here than there was. So I've removed water so that it's now what is apparently referred to as a low immersion bath. So there's like just the teeniest bit of water skimming the top. I also lifted them up and realigned them so now they're as straight a line as this pen will allow instead of a curl. Um, so I'm going to speckle. If you want to come take a look at my plant, I have teal to speckle with and cherry red to speckle. So I think what I'm going to do is there'll be cherry red speckles throughout and I'm only going to do just the hints of teal speckles in the red 
and I'll avoid the yellow with the teal because I know it'll make it kind of green. Uh, because we will be now using powder in powder form, I'm going to mask up. So once I've masked up and got the heat back on, we will start filming you.
explain what I did in case my mask wasn't very clear. Using the tea strainer, I took a little bit of citric acid and then apparently a lot of my speckle color. And I just tapped it through the bowl. Um, I'm looking at it now and I think I've added a little too much teal. Uh, apparently I was right and I needed a little and my idea of a little was still a lot. <laughs> Um, but if you want to come take a peek in the bowl, you can see I've got lots of red speckling. Um, we've got a decent concentration of spread of teal and a little bit of teal up here. Teal looks quite dark right now. I think what's going to happen is as it steams, it'll blue up a little bit. Um, honestly, I'm regretting the teal a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to be too upset because it'll add a nice contrast pop from all the red, orange, and yellow that's happening. It did get, it snuck its way into the yellow, but I'm not too upset. So I'm going to let this steam until I can tell that the speckles have kind of set up a little bit more. Um, and then I'll pull them out using the zip ties, which I haven't actually addressed all that much yet, um, I'm using them just so that it's easier to grab the skeins as a whole and keep the skeins separate. Um, but yeah, cameraman has to go pick up dinner soon, so uh, I don't know, I may be filming the last part by myself, or at least the last dying part by myself. We'll see. Um, but. Honestly, if these teal speckles stay quite dark, which I have a slight feeling they might, and they'll mingle with the red and become kind of purple, then I won't be upset. I'm not upset anyway, I'm just playing in the dye pot, so I guess we'll, I'm going to let these steam, so I'm actually going to cover them. They're currently on a fairly low heat, um, and I'll check on them periodically, and then once I think they're pretty saturated, I'll pull them out take a look and then decide if I need to flip them and speckle the other side or if I just want to leave them with the one set of speckles. So uh, I'll be back. All right, so the yarn has sat, it's steamed. It appears to have taken up as much dye as it's going to. It's fluffing all over me. I pulled them out and noticed a couple of the skeins got partly buried under the other skeins, so I'm probably going to end up with an unintentional fade, <laughs> where a few of my skeins are slightly less speckled and a little more yellow, and then some of them are quite heavily speckled with more orange. I think that was not necessarily the dye's fault or the way it oriented the yarn, but more that I had too many skeins for the pot. I probably could have fit four practically and then I tried to squeeze in five. So now I'm just washing it. So basically I'm going to take not icy cold but not warm and I'm checking to see when it appears to stop bleeding because these are bleeding out some yellow still. Or a lot of yellow. Basically that rinse will continue until I'm comfortable with the lack of yellow coming off of the skeins. So we'll do those and then we'll come back when I'm hanging them up to dry. Alright, so my yarn's all dried up. Um, I ran into a rinsing issue and I'm pretty sure I'll probably tinge my fingers a little bit yellow when I knit with it, but you can only rinse for so long when you're using other people's water. <laughs> so. Um, I think what happened is I overcrowded my dye pot, which meant my colors are not consistent. These are definitely unique skeins, sisters, not twins. And I think because I had so many in there, I was like, oh, well, I need the entire stock solutions. When ultimately I was adding at least, based on some research I did, probably about a half a cup extra of stock than what I maybe should have. So I've over, I have overcrowded my dye pot with yarn and stock. So I think I just have a lot of extra yellow that's just hanging out and uh, was uh, excusing itself from the party. Anyway, 
overall, I'm very happy with this color. I'm glad I was going to do a colorway that's been in my head for a while, but I think I would have been disappointed because I would have screwed it up somehow. So now I know better and I'll be able to do it next time. Because I ended up with a fade. A couple of these skeins, particularly these two, got a little bit buried under the other three. And you can see this side has a ton of speckles in the turquoise and red family. This one, not so much. So it got buried and I didn't notice until everything had set and I pulled them out and it doesn't bother me enough to go back and add the speckles. Since it's just for me, I'll leave it this way and I'll just probably do either fading it from few speckles to lots of speckles or I'll be a well-behaved knitter and I'll actually alternate my skeins. We'll see. Um... But I was worried about the teal. I don't know if I commented on if I was worried about the teal. But it actually turned out to mix with the red and make this really pretty deep burgundy purple in a lot of spots. I think it kind of looks like ashes of the fire, so I'm not complaining. Um, the method worked pretty well for dye application. I don't see a ton. There are little patches where the yellow is lighter, where there was less saturation. But there really aren't very many like glaringly white zones so for a first attempt i think in terms of covering my yarn i'm pretty happy i don't think i felted it <laughs> once it's dry i'll be able to tell a little bit better but it seems to still be yarn and not rough um, but i'm thinking some of these may need a reskein. they got a little messy in the process but then i'm very happy with the addition of the cherry red speckles i think i'll have to go and dye a skein and just cherry red and maybe teal because i think that would be a very fun combo but anyway if i had to name a culprit for which one was uh keeping dye it would probably be pumpkin orange just based on it seemed to be taking up the slowest. Um, but it could also be that bright yellow was leaving its yellow behind. I'm not sure. One of them was definitely the problem one. Um, so again, in summary, I used jacquard acid dyes in bright yellow, uh, golden yellow, pumpkin orange, teal, and cherry red. And then I just used a turkey cooking pot that I bought at uh, Value Village, along with a few little utensils I picked up at Value Village or Co-op to designate as my dye things. Excuse me, Mom. Who do you think you people are? Now, do you think you people are house cats? I see. I see, ladies. I understand. Oh, no. No. Stop. Stop. No, we don't play on the screen. They're such babies. Stop. 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 I'll come play with you after. Those are the girls. They're desperate to be house cats. They made, one of them made it into my first podcast, Being a Ninja. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to name it. I'm thinking maybe something fire related or tiger lily. I haven't decided entirely yet. But I'm also very excited because when I skein it up, I won't really skein them because it's wet. I'll get kind of that matching tips skein where it'll be all orange on the top with the yellow on the bottom. That was unintentional, but stop! <laughs> um, so that probably means I'll get quite a lot of small repeats and variegations, so it'll be very much in your face fire colors. But I couldn't be more happy with my first attempt. I was worried I was going to hate it. I don't. I've learned a few things, like I would want one of those buffet trays. Um, and 
I'd maybe play around with mixing colors in my dye stocks and not just committing to whatever the mix of powder is. Um, but yeah, I think next time will be glowing sea inspired. So bright greens with dark, um, dark speckles. So once these are dried and skinned up, I'll film a last little final thoughts clip. And then that'll be it, I think. The cats are being very distracting. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed dying along with me. I am filming this clip over a month after I died. If you can tell, I've taken a chop. Uh, my hair is fluffier. But I'm sure some of you wanted to know what my final thoughts were and what my final results looked like. So, since I'm actually doing editing this time, I will pop a picture in here of the skeins lined up kind of in the fade that I think they would have played well in. Uh, since then, I have caked them. So, and started knitting, hence the mess. But, they are a lot oranger than I thought. Not that I'm complaining. Um, you can see the speckles. Um, but before I show you what it looks like knit up though, my final thoughts were I added way too much dye. I have since dyed two more batches of colors. I did a batch with my friends and a batch on my own and didn't think to film any of it. I used, I was dyeing three skeins as opposed to five, but I probably used like a third of what I used to dye five skeins to dye three. So I used well over what I probably should have, which explains why it took me so long to rinse it and why things, um, why things bled so badly. And, uh, I also haven't really used the strainer speckling method since. I found it was easier just take a spoon and tap it or put it in your fingers and salt bay it. Um, but... Overall, I was quite happy with it, and it taught me a few things that I knew for the next rounds. Uh, at the end, I mentioned I was going to maybe try dyeing up a colorway inspired by the glowing sea from the Fallout video games. Um, it's basically a giant irradiated wasteland where the sky glows like nuclear green and everything is dead and like rotting. So I took an attempt and instead I ended up with uh, ocean, or uh, mountain lake, tones of browns and silver blues and soft blue greens. So I have three skeins of this in a gathering yarn DK that I don't remember the name of. But I have dyed that since. I think it will become the, um, I think it's just called the Golden Shawl by Unit, uh, which you can only get on their like site. It's not on Ravelry, I think. But I have since dyed that. I featured it on podcast episode four. So if you want a more in-depth look at the three yarns, they are all on there. I have also since dyed a non-superwash skein of Peruvian wool, another gathering yarn base. With my friends, we used literally an identical technique, but less yarn and didn't coordinate our colors. Uh, so we have orange, reds, purples. And then because it was non-superwash, our speckles kind of just became like accents, but that's okay. So the moment you were waiting for, what it looks like knit up. I am holding this double because I'm impatient. I'm not knitting a fingering weight sweater. I have started another cozy classic raglan using it, which I think I ultimately decided to call it Icarus. Uh, cameraman's mom refers to this as the Icarus sweater now and always asks me how it's going so I'm sure she'll be pleased to see I'm online again um hi Glenda anyway so this is what it's looking like so what I've done is the top was the lightest skein held double then I introduced the second lightest with a strand of the lightest and then jumped immediately to second lightest with third lightest and I think I might be on third and fourth just to um, 
reduce the variegation and uh, keep kind of a fade. And then I'm switching when I start to get hmm, balls about that size so that I know I have enough to do sleeves and cuffs with each color. I left extra of this lightest skein so that I can do the cuffs on all spots in it. Um, but it's obviously a very variegated yarn. Um, definitely it's not pooling but it's definitely got like tiger stripes, zebra stripes. And that could be because I'm marling it. Obviously, I'm playing with two colors at once. It's going to make the or two strands at once. But in case you've knit the Cozy Classic and are looking at my increases going, that's not the Cozy Classic. I have knit this before and somehow could do the increases, but today I couldn't. Or when I went to do the increases, my brain like blanked out and screwed them up real hard. So I just did yarn overs instead. Instead of like these eyelets down the chest and the back. But yeah, you can see I've got all the speckles, I've got the reds, I've got the orange. I am very happy. This is kind of taking a break for Christmas knitting though. Uh, I'll talk about it more in the next podcast that I might film after I finish doing this. So anyway, my final thoughts and words of warnings for dyeing yarn now that I've done it a few times. Um, mask, if you're using powder. If you have access to one, I know right now because of Corona time, um, things are kind of, it's harder to get that. I'm fortunate that in these clips you saw me wearing like a full on mask and that's because at my boyfriend's house they have like construction gear and amongst that they have those masks. When I did my other two at home, I didn't have a mask so I was just careful and kept my kept a safe vertical distance from the powder um whoa, what else make sure you don't overcrowd your dye pot because uh as we've seen that doesn't work very well okay i wasn't in the middle of filming um and then what where Ooh, a train of thought. Um, I'd have fun with it. If you're thinking of starting and you're on a bit of a budget, I went to, I called it Value Village earlier, but it was a Goodwill, I think. And I just purchased a bunch of Goodwill utensils and a Goodwill roasting pan to do my yarn dyeing in. I think it cost me like seven dollars for that stuff and then I stopped at a co-op and picked up the like Rubbermaid bottles and a few other things um, but that's that's definitely a way to keep it economic is use a cheap pan but make sure it's like stainless steel you don't want to start ruining it with like acid being introduced um, into things but yeah overall one last time, this is what it looks like knit up. Um, and then I've already shown the picture because I edited this time. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to, again, I don't remember her name. Um, I'll put it in text right here. But uh, I followed her tutorial and she broke down the time it took to do that tutorial and at first I was like oh no way it took that long but now that I've done this it totally she spent so much time and she put it for free she breaks down like eight techniques I only used a combo of two or three it's totally the perfect resource and she explains that the reason she did it was when she started dying she found that um Indie dyeing was like this click. Everything was a well-guarded secret, so she wants it to be open so that everyone can join it. So my tutorial is probably not awesome. I would highly recommend looking at hers if you really want to understand the technical part. Um, and what I've done, it goes without saying, only works with wool. Acid dyes only work with wool because of the like polymer nature of protein fibers. You have to use completely different 
dyes to work with uh, plant fibers. If anyone's interested in the science of that, I did a whole report on it a couple of years ago. Um, I'd be happy to post the infographic somewhere for people to enjoy if they want to. But that's about it. I hope you enjoyed following my dye along. Um, if you use it and want to show me what you made following my jank tutorial, just tag me in it. I'd love to see it. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, until next time.